Let me tell you what I would do if I started all over today, right? If I went from scratch and I started all over, what I would do, I would start with a local moving company, two trucks, short-term lease. All right, I'd keep it real simple with local. The two trucks, based on my budget of how I would start, would either be uh, rental trucks, I would purchase them, I would lease them. We'll talk about the scaling matrix and how to decide what to do with what. Everybody's different. It's all about like, yeah, I'm willing to I'm willing to deal with that. I'm willing to put in that extra work. Yeah, I'm willing, nah, I don't really wanna be bothered with that. I'll do it this way. I'm happy with making that kind of money. You know, one of the first questions I ask people that I work with privately is, how much money you wanna make? That's gonna kind of determine how we need to structure your path of where you're going. Let me tell you what I would do if I started all over today, right? If I went from scratch and I started all over, what I would do, right? Doesn't mean that's what you should do. Remember, everybody's different. It's all about like, yeah, I'm willing to, I'm willing to deal with that. I'm willing to put in that extra work. Yeah, I'm willing, nah, I don't really wanna be bothered with that. I'll do it this way. I'm happy with making that kind of money, right? You know, one of the first questions I ask people that I work with privately is, how much money do you wanna make, right? That's gonna kind of determine how we need to structure your path of where you're going. And so if I was starting all over again, first of all, this is my first warehouse, okay? I don't have a picture of the truck rental yard uh, that I worked in, but this is my first warehouse that I got maybe three months, four, three or four months after I started off working in the Penske truck rental yard, dispatching my trucks there, I rented two trucks. Um, I finally was able to go and negotiate this deal on this warehouse. That's not mine, by the way. <laughs> it's basically from here and then right over here, there's a door and that was it. I want to say it was maybe oh, 3,000 square feet, okay? But like 1,200 of it was office. Had way too much office, but I got a good deal on it. All the carpet was ripped up. There was no carpet in the office. It was all like cement with glue from the carpet that was there. Um, and that was where I started. That's me in the office. Uh, I was, I don't know, probably 20 years old. Yellow pages, eating fast food, right? That was, that was like three times a day I was eating fast food back then. No more. I haven't touched Wendy's in years. Um, but, you know, got my, had a CRM, by the way. Early on, there was a, a, a DOS program that a guy made for the moving industry. I don't even remember the name of it. Um, but printed my contracts, did all that. Had all my movers. That's all the movers. They're, uh, you know, what I call now the mover database that we turn into electronic, which we'll talk about later. Uh, that's my mover database sitting there when I needed guys. Um, you'll see this book right here, the three ring binder that had my script in it, that had my rebuttals in it, that had um, all the information that I needed to be able to book jobs. You know, all my contracts, here's two file cabinets, four more. I kept six months worth of contracts right there next to me. Uh, and that was it. I started off, uh, my first office was in uh, Las Vegas uh, for six months. Never got an office, worked out of my apartment and um, uh, rented two trucks there. And that office, I couldn't get a license. So I was renting uh I was renting, I was, I was doing a labor service with one contract and renting trucks with another contract, right? And so I was like, there's gotta be a better way, right? Like I don't, I, I want the name, I want storage. I want names on my trucks. I wanna build a real business. I don't wanna be out here doing this like, you know, halfway of doing it. I wanna do it for real. So I went to Denver, Colorado, right? Six months later. So my first moving company failed, right? Just opened it up, spent six months there, and then left. Went to Denver, uh, and that's really where it all started for me, right? Had storage here. That's me on the forklift. Um, you know, when I first got the warehouse, I mean, really, what I first did was when I was working out of the truck rental yard, I already put in the yellow pages moving in storage. So we were getting storage customers, and I was putting them in a self-storage unit. And then by the time I got the warehouse, I had a bunch of storage already, and we brought it all over and just had it floor loaded with tape. I don't recommend this, by the way. This is just <laughs> what, you know, like learning, you know, just figuring out how to do it. And then I would order um, 20 of these vaults at a time when I had money. 
They were about $200 a piece. I got them from Contain in North Carolina. They'd come out. I'd have to build them in the warehouse uh, with these little clamps. Some of you guys probably know if you do storage. And um, that was it. We ended up taking over the space next door. We ended up moving into a bigger warehouse. Uh, and the Denver office alone, I think we got up to uh, at five or 600 volts. Other offices the same. But, you know, that was me at the, at the very, very beginning. I literally was there. You saw me in the office on the phone uh, when a storage shipment came in uh, or was going out. Either way, I forwarded the phone. There was a code that you put in the phone to my cell phone, my Nextel walkie-talkie. Went out to the warehouse, and there was not one. We talked about liability for storage. I was so tight with the security. There was not one crew that was ever allowed in this warehouse without me or in the future with somebody else had our inventory sheets that were done for storage and every single item had to be checked off as it came in. Every single, I was on the phone booking. If I call came in for me to book a move, the movers had to sit there and wait, right? I paid them for the time, but they had to sit there and wait. Okay, I'm done. All right, come, let's go. You've got to run it tight with storage. You can't let people in and out of there. You've got to make sure it's on point. So if I was starting all over today, I would start with a local moving company, two trucks, short-term lease. All right, I'd keep it real simple with local. The two trucks, based on my budget of how I would start, would either be uh, rental trucks, I would purchase them, I would lease them. We'll talk about the scaling matrix and how to decide what to do with what. But at the end of the day, you could start with two rental trucks. I started with two rental trucks. I know a lot of people that started with two rental trucks. I would do a short-term office lease. And the reason you wanna do a short-term office lease is because you wanna be in a position, when I say short-term, a year, two years, as low as you could get them. All the landlords, they're gonna want three years, they're gonna want five years. But the thing is, if, if you're gonna commit to that kind of time, you need something bigger to grow into, right? But you don't wanna pay that upfront. Always try to negotiate some upfront free rent, right? But the, it's harder to get upfront free rent on a year lease, right? The more years that you're willing to give them, the more you can actually uh, negotiate um, long term. So for me, I would want something that's like ideally a year just to get situated, just to get going, just to kind of prove out the concept, make some money. Uh, and then I would move into kind of a more of a long term facility that I'd be willing to uh, commit to a, uh, a longer term and negotiate some free upfront. Okay. I would also start this based on like where I live. Uh, if I live somewhere good and it's a good market and I feel comfortable there, um, if I you know live in this little small town and I feel like I need to go somewhere bigger, I would go somewhere bigger. For me, um, you know, I left where I grew up just because I was 19 and it was just better to kind of, you know, get you know you don't have your, your friends aren't really doing much. They're either in college or they're like messing around and not doing anything. And you know, it's it's I went somewhere else, right? And I ended up recruiting a bunch of them anyways uh, to work for me. But uh, I would start either where you are or identify a market that you want to move to and go there. I would hire and train a dispatcher and a moving consultant right away, right? Now, you might say, Lewis, like, I, if I don't have the money to do that. And by the way, as I'm going through this, I want you to think about, you know, most of you have companies. A lot of you have multiple companies. Um, you know, this could be for your second location as well, right? If I'm, this is me, this is, by the way, this is not my advice for you. This is just what I would do. We talked about the five models to scale. It's going to be different for everybody. For me, I'd keep it simple. Local moves, couple of trucks, get started, keep the overhead low, hire and train a dispatcher and a moving consultant because I don't want to do it, right? You know, I might dispatch one day just for the fun of it just to kind of show the dispatcher how it's done, or I might jump on a call just to kind of, you know, for the fun of it or show them how it's done. The same way that, you know, I'll go to my friend's pizza place and make pizza for the fun of it because that's what I did before I was in moving, right? So, uh, but I don't want to start by like being in that position, right? So I would hire and train a dispatcher and a moving consultant. I would start with direct mail as for marketing. I would start with direct mail postcards, pay-per-click, I would do Google, I would do Bing, I would buy moving leads, probably, uh, you know, Equate Media, Quote Runner, uh, maybe moving.com, and I would start my referral program, and all of it would be tracked, okay? Everything would be tracked, tracking numbers to make sure 
that the stuff's working. So that postcard goes out. It has a unique phone number on it that when that phone, uh, when that call comes in, it says postcard, right? And we're able to put it right in the CRM so that we're able to track it and know exactly what's going on. Because then from there, you know, at the beginning stages, I've got to be able to see what's working, right? Especially at the beginning, my marketing budget, I'm putting it out there. It's like all I have. I don't have any repeat customers. I don't have any referral customers. I need to make sure that this stuff's working. So I need to track it like from day one. And I know a lot of you don't track it now, 10 years later, right? We're going to talk about how to do that. Um, but I would make sure all that stuff is tracked. I would develop roles and processes for a model business right away from day one. And what that means is, and this is really important for, for you guys that are, are already established if you don't have your roles and processes, which we'll talk more about. So we'll, we'll get to that. But that means, okay, this dispatcher, this moving consultant, I'm, I've already got my roles uh, you know, and, and processes established for both of them. right? So if I'm starting today, I'm like ahead of the game. So here, this is what you do. This is what you do. But if I didn't have that, I would spend a little time in that position and develop what those roles are. Like, what do I want a dispatcher to do? What do I want a salesperson to do? What are the step-by-step -step processes of how they dispatch the crew? How they take in storage, right? How they follow up with a customer. I need all that down because remember, in order to thrive in any economy, you need to be able to hire quick and you need to be able to fire quick. And part of that is having the roles down and having the processes down. You're not working out, See ya. Bring somebody in because I'm hiring quickly. Sit them down. Here's your role. Here's the processes. Train them. I'm back up and running. Okay? So, so important. We'll talk more about that. Once I had a profitable model business with all my foundations down, okay, all the foundation is there. We talked about that before. We've got uh, lead generation, booking moves, servicing moves, making sure we've got happy customers, and accounting. I've got all that dialed in, right? I'm not jumping the gun and opening up another location before I have that. Once I do, I'll open a second location. Then develop and fine tune the processes for managing multiple locations. This is something that caught me totally off guard. You know, I had what I felt like were good processes and good roles in place uh, with my first location. And so, and the way that I managed it, but I managed it being there, seeing what's going on, being able to like see and, and, and feel and watch. Um, but when I opened more locations, I couldn't be there. I couldn't see, I couldn't watch, right? And the technology back then was not like the technology now. Sure, I had cameras in those offices and I could, you know, log into those cameras and see what was happening. It wasn't like I was pulling them up on my phone, but I need to now establish you know, I, I have all this now, right? But if I didn't, I would say, okay, the second location is open. Let me really fine tune how I'm going to run that office just as good as I run this office without being there. What reports do I need to see? What meetings do I need to have? What do I need to check in on? What are my metrics and my, you know, key performance indicators that I say, oh, that happened with the number, right? That number reached above this threshold. I need to take this action. I would start dialing that in. I would then hire a manager slash COO to run the day-to-day -day of the operations. It's a little too early right now to decide like what caliber um, I would want, right? You know, sometimes you, you can't have it totally planned out. You've kind of kind of get to a place, see where you're at, see how it's going, and then decide. But I want someone that's going to run the day-to-day -day of not only the existing company, but the new offices, right? And now... You know, I already have it, but if I didn't, I would want to establish what that is. But what that would be, that role, would be a role that I would be uh, establishing here in number six, right? Because I would personally go, okay, this is how I'm managing this. This needs to be done every day. This needs to be checked. I need to look at these reports. I need to go in the CRM and do that. I need to make sure this is happening. And then I would hire somebody to replace me to do that day to day, right? Because again, I'm, if, I, if I do this again, I'm not doing this to like have a job for myself, right? I'm doing this to set it up, make some money. I'm not doing it to get in there every day and run it. Then I would open three more locations over the next 18 months, okay? I'd open three more locations over the next 18 months. So now I've got five locations, 
right? Because once, once you've got the, the, the model business, right? Now you could open a second location, no problem. You just duplicate it. Then you develop and fine tune the processes, right? So it's like, okay, this is how I'm managing it. If this happens, I handle it this way. I feel in control, right? It's, it's a control thing. Like I feel in control. It's thousands of miles away, but I feel in control. I don't have to be there. I'm hiring somebody. I got them in place. They're running the day to day, right? While I'm sitting back now that I watch them, right? I'm watching them. Okay. They're on it. They're running the day to day. They're not running the business. They're running the processes, right? So they're not just like trying to figure it out. I'm not hiring a manager to just go figure it out. Like, no, I've already figured it out. When I fine tune the processes, I handed this person those processes, those roles, those metrics, like this is how you run the business. And now I watch and I was like, okay, that person could do it. Cool. They could handle, let's, let's do three more locations, right? I'll open up three more. I'll spend the next two years bringing all five locations to 10 million total. Okay. Now, of course, this is, this is, this is my projection, right? And I say it with confidence, but who knows? Maybe in two years, you know, maybe this number is 8 million. Maybe it's 12, <laughs> right? But my intention going into it would be like, all right, I'm going to spend the next two years working on fundamentals, right? Now I've got five. It's different than one. I've got five. It's different than two, right? It's a whole different ball game. When I went from, you know, one to open my second one, okay. Right, I had, a, I had a licensee partner in that one office, so it was easier. But then all of a sudden I had five. It became a lot more to manage, right? It's a different thing. You've got to be that moving CEO. You've got to be managing your day to day on a whole different level. Then I would just continue to develop processes, people, and profits, okay? Continuously. If it's me today, I'd open five locations. I'd do 10 million. I'd want to set a target to profit 2 million a year and, you know, run that profitably for, you know, either, you know, run it for five years and then sell it or just keep it going, right? Or, you know, maybe I get another gust of motivation, right? Maybe I go back to my, uh, you know, go back to my workbook here to what do I want in my life? And all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I got all this already. Hmm, that worked out pretty good. I wrote it down, figured out what I wanted. I came up with a plan. I went and got it. Let me open 20 more offices, right? Like, at that point, who knows? But I feel like, for me, at this stage of my life, it's, you know, I, yeah, I did 20 million. I don't, I don't need to do it again, right? Um, I would be very content here with it just running smooth, consistent, smooth, consistent, smooth, consistent, easy, like not, not, not this like weight that I'm wearing, you know what I mean? Like it's not um, stressful, right? To be able to bring in 10 million, you know, put 2 million a year in your pocket with like not a lot of stress. I mean, that's good, right? So that's what I would do if I started all over. Hey, my friend, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If so, pound that subscribe button. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments down below. That's where we get the inspiration for these videos. And I'd love to hear what you think. Also, if you want to join us for our next live monthly training where I train and coach moving company owners to take their moving companies to the next level, then join us in our Moving CEO Business Program. This is the program where I go live every single month training moving company owners on new strategies in marketing, operations, finance, sales, everything they need to take their business to the next level. And I'd love to have you join us. It's called Moving CEO Business Program. And you could click on the link below or over here to get more information on that. Again, please subscribe to this channel. And if you know anyone that would find any inspiration or this would help them in their business, please share this with them. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. And until I see you next time, go out there every single day, profit in your business and thrive.